Dear Yevokarja, hello everyone, you are very welcome. Whether you are an old friend or if you've just found us, may I say, your timing is perfect because we're about to start a new project. Let me show you what that is. Come on. Come on. This is a 1958 NSU Prima. NSU, I hear you say. What does that mean? NSU is a contraction of Neckarsulm, a city in Germany where the NSU factory was based. Germany, I hear you say. This scooter looks just like a Lambretta, and I happen to know they come from Italy, you're thinking. Well, NSU built Lambrettas under license until the mid-1950s. When the license expired, they decided to build their own version with several technical enhancements, and they called it a Prima, which means first place or best. You have to love the ambition. NSU's engineering was defined as innovative and forward-looking, but this wonderful styling remains traditionally Italian. It even has a hook for a handbag. Or a satchel. Or maybe even the leash of a beloved pet. Time for a closer look. The fastest diagnostic for an old engine is to see if it can be started. The fastest way of ruining a future hand modelling career is to pour battery acid without protection. After charging these new batteries, I let them sit for several hours as the process releases hydrogen, which we know is an explosive gas. So no welding or grinding today. The electrical system on the Prima is unusual. These are two 6 volt batteries wired in series to create a 12 volt circuit. The reason behind this is the Prima has a Dynastart or starter generator instead of a kickstart so the bike could be started by a person wearing high heels, which I am not willing to demonstrate for you. Just exciting the fuel oil mixture. The key is used for turning on both fuel and ignition. Pulling the choke and tickler knob. Choke and tickler sounds like an extreme form of romance, but it's actually just an aid to starting a cold engine. It runs. Let's see if it drives. I couldn't quite catch it on video, but the scooter keeps jumping out of second gear. This is a common issue on Primas and could be either an easy fix 
or a trickier one. I won't know until I can get a closer look. Looks like the low fuel light is working. Bonus. The low fuel light is giving additional information. Because the bulb gets brighter when RPM increases, it means the electrical generation part of the Dynastart is working. The Prima does not have separate ignition and lighting coils like similar bikes of this era. The Dynastart unit provides power for all electrical consumers, and as we can see by the increase in voltage, is recharging the batteries. That's a relief. By running the engine, we know there is fuel, spark ignition and compression. The final engine test I'm going to perform is a check of just how much compression we have. This is a good indication of engine health. The test gauge mounts in the spark plug hole. I don't know for sure what a healthy compression figure is for an NSU Prima, but I do know that this engine has a very low compression ratio of 6.3 to 1. But what does compression ratio mean? Let's say the parallel lines represent an imaginary cylinder. With the piston at the top of its travel and the volume of the cylinder at its smallest, we can only fit in one pint of lemonade. But when the piston moves to the bottom of its travel, we have enough space to fit in 6.3 pints of lemonade, or mimosa, or whatever you're having yourself. What a lower than normal compression ratio means is that a perfectly good Prima will have a slightly lower compression test result than we might expect for a typical two-stroke engine. What that figure is, I don't know yet, but let's try and find out. On the day of this test, the local weather station recorded an atmospheric pressure of 998.8 hectopascals. Converted into ancient Gaelic, this is 14.49 pounds per square inch. If I now multiply that figure by 6.3, we get 91 psi. I stress that this is not what the compression should be, as this is a very rough calculation, but I'm using this figure as a bottom line. If the test returns a lower value than 91 psi, that would mean the piston or cylinder is definitely not sealing correctly, and air is bypassing the piston or escaping through a leak in the cylinder head. This figure is consistent with the normal range of approximately 90 to 115 psi for similar two-stroke engines. For the test, I have the throttle fully open and I'm just operating the starter as normal. consistently getting 105 psi. Once again, I don't know with absolute certainty if that's good or bad, but there is one last trick we can use to check for upper engine wear. Don't. 
I'm going to squirt a few drops of two-stroke oil into the cylinder. If there is a worn seal between the piston and cylinder wall, the oil will temporarily plug the gap and compression will increase. If I run the test afterwards and get a higher figure than 105 psi, that means I'll have to find and fix the reason why. Looks like we'll be exploring the insides of this engine in the not too distant future. As for the rest of this bike... Let's delve deeper. I love air cool technology and I love two stroke technology, but I've never worked on a scooter before. So if you are a Vespa or a Lambretta fan, please allow this indulgence. Let's have a look inside here. Firstly, we have a gravity fed fuel tank at the very top. That's great news. It means no mechanical or electrical fuel pump to worry about. It's premixed two stroke, meaning the engine oil is already in the fuel and that means there's no oil injector pump to have to worry about either. We turn on the tap and petrol and oil flows to the engine. Turn off the tap and it stops. Fuel is supplied by force of nature with no moving parts. Simple and reliable. The contents of the tank are feeding a single bean carburetor. We can see here the movement of the choke and tickler controls. They are very stiff and will require a closer look. The carburetor is feeding a single cylinder air-cooled engine. Air-cooled meaning there's no radiator, no coolant hoses, no thermostat, no water pump, no antifreeze to have to worry about. We can see that it's air-cooled because of the cooling vanes designed to give far more surface area to the cooling air as it passes over them. On that note, Unlike all the other air cool technology around here, the engine does not have access to ram airflow, meaning it is encased below the rider. To compensate for this, we have an engine driven forced air cooling fan, which circulates cool air via a ducting shroud, similar to the Volkswagen Type 4 engine we stripped back on the previous project. From a vehicle health perspective, what I'm seeing in here is a very wet engine. By that I mean we have one or more fluid leaks. A little trickle is to be expected with two-stroke technology, but I should not be seeing things like a pool of gear oil underneath the bike, which I am. These dribbles will need attention. What I find most unsettling is the amount of non-standard wiring on this bike. Domestic or household wire and connectors have been used all over the scooter and should not be here. There are also some spurious electrical items added, such as this set of indicators. There are only a few different wire colours we should be seeing, and right now most of them are on my wall, not the scooter. In my experience, the weak point of any classic car or bike is freestyle wiring. And by now I'm sure you know about my dislike of crimped insulated terminals. The ignition switch and the taillight are also only working intermittently. I wouldn't feel comfortable taking this bike far from home in its current state. These things, combined with the way in which one previous owner has literally glued the bike together, don't inspire confidence. Every panel has some form of damage or corrosion and even the briefest inspection keeps spotting more safety issues. 
All of these things mean the Prima deserves a proper ground-up restoration. And it really does deserve a proper restoration. The bike is complete, which is half the battle. It has a little bit of rarity to it. It's a lovely bike to ride. It has huge grin factor and it's extremely comfortable. In fact, this is possibly the most comfortable motorcycle I've ever ridden, which is an admission that I may well have been missing out on scooters all of these years. So I'm going to really enjoy this restoration. I hope that you will join me for it too. And so that you don't miss out on the next episode, please subscribe to TechSheBean and together we're going to explore the restoration of our NSU Prima. Until then, Slong of Fall.